Hello again. <laughs> so, um, since I'm the first one after the lunch, uh, even being a boring lawyer, I had to invent some GIF. So, yeah, freedom is very important, but who decides what's fair? Me. So, basically, what fairness means, this is the... Um, one of the concepts that uh, I'm trying to address here. Yesterday there was a wonderful tutorial about this, but seven minutes compared to one hour and 45 uh, will be a different challenge. So basically, you know, fairness in machine learning has gone, in the last year, in the last few years, is going very much high in the, but in the legal liter literature, we are still waiting for that. We have a couple of wonderful papers, but still, what fairness, what is the notion of fairness in data protection? This is what I will try to do. So, uh, um, I have no time to dig into the GDPR in detail, but just very few pills. So, first of all, it's not a new concept. It's not something that is in the GDPR. It's, it, it, it was in the Data Protection Directive, of course, and in, uh, in the Charter, huh? the Charter of Fundamental Rights, when referring to the protection of personal data, fairness principle is there. Basically, it is associated to other two principles in the GDPR, so it's always in uh, tandem with lawfulness, uh, for example, Article 6, etc., and with transparency. And the European Union Court of Justice usually refers to fairness in terms of transparency, at least one way of understanding this. But my question here is, can we see an independent meaning for fairness in data protection, in algorithmic uh, regulation, or is it just an interpretational tool? Is just a way to interpret fairness, uh, to interpret lawfulness and transparency, or is it uh, something independent? So the first thing that I am very um, that I want to emphasize is the link between fairness and non-discrimination, because this is a mostly a computer science audience, and uh, there is a robust literature assuming that fairness means non-discrimination, hmm? because this is usually what we deal with in computer science. Uh, science. And actually, it's not so distant from the very first reference to fairness that was the Council of Europe Resolution of 72. Uh, one of the goals was preventing unfair discrimination. Also, Article 29 Working Party, which is the, the Council of All Data Protection Authorities, in 2017 connected the notion of fairness to non-discrimination. And one of the you know, Brazilian version of the GDPR also doesn't mention fairness in the as the principle, but non-discrimination. So, um, the European Court of Justice basically has uh, tried to suggest a new um, uh, meaning for fairness as fair balancing of interest. I will read all these parts of different judgment in one line, <laughs> because could uh, uh, reassume uh, the, the thought of the Court of Justice. So, it's an interpretative tool for balancing the burden of data controller with the data subject interest, in particular, the interest to data protection, privacy, and free movement, not based on an invidious choice between two rights, but on a fair balancing considering the substantial interests at issue. And just to mention, the organizers of the tutorial of yesterday, I like their definition of fairness as a protection to the inherent asymmetric data subject controller relationship. So it's something looking at the real imbalance at stake in different contexts and trying to rebalance this form of unbalance. Uh, then we had uh, two important data protection authorities. The, the first one is uh, the UK one, ICO, and the second is the French one, the CNIL. So basically, in the same year, they also released opinion on what fairness means, and they add something more. Hmm? They say, Okay, of course it's transparency, and we all agree about transparency. It's in the GDPR, okay. But it's also reasonable expectations of data subjects. So you, you, you need to take into account this, and you need to assess the effects of data processing. So um, looking at the effects is a post, ex post view. Not yesterday, yesterday there was reference to fairness in the processing or fairness of the outcomes. I think that this refers to fairness in the outcomes. CNIL, similar. Huh? Uh, 
outcomes at the individual or collective level. So you look if there are some damages, some, some harms at the individual or collective level, or you predict if they can be. And in this case, this is unfair. Huh? Then the EDPB, a few months ago, <coughs> released uh, an opinion, uh, not about fairness, but in one paragraph, they define fairness as the principle of um, recognizing the reasonable expectation of data subject, considering possible adverse consequences, relationship and potential effect. But still, this is very problematic, and how the expectations is something so relative. Expectations might go lower and lower in the future because people might be very used to be uh, violated in their data protection. That's why I looked at all member states, how, not all, these are uh, 15 out of 25 uh, official languages, and they try to look at how they <coughs> define, the, 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 how they translate the word fair, fairness, in the GDPR and in the charter, so we have no time here to look at it, but just two comments. Uh, the, the, the first comment is that actually two different words are used in no languages apart from English. English use fair, the other, uh, the other languages use always two words. Um, just looking at uh, linguistic families, we have the Germanic languages that use fairness and good faith. Uh, in, in German, uh, every time that fairness is related to transparency is translated with fire. Every time it's connected to lawfulness is translated as treu und glaube, which is good faith in contractual law. And and also in neo-Latin languages. So the reference of good faith, I think, is very important because good faith is a contractual law concept coming from ancient uh, Roman law. And uh, also in Swiss data protection law, for example, among the principle, you have good faith and not fairness. I think this is another similarity that I wanted to emphasize. So basically, what is good faith and how good faith could bring an added value to fairness? So good faith is mitigating contractual vulnerability. This is the issue, the, 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 the focus of good faith. And rebalancing significant imbalance between parties. It's a really context-dependent con um, co uh, concept based on actual effects. So just to conclude for my 48 seconds left, uh, considering the, substan uh, the substantial situation in a specific given context, this might be a way to look at fairness. It's beyond mere lawfulness, it's beyond mere uh, legality, it's looking at real expectation and balancing. And basically, uh, the, the reference that we, we find, in particular in the Polish version, the, 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 the word that they use in Polish is preventing adverse effect. So I think that it's an ex post approach of fairness, the one that uh, the GDPR could accept. We look at the adverse effects, we prevent, we predict adverse effects, and we try to mitigate those adverse effects. This is the difference between fairness and lawfulness. And for more questions after, thank you.